Hey everyone, for this week's video, I want to talk about star trail photography and different settings you can use to get different results. Before I do that, I just want to talk about a photographer that I admire and that influences me and really kind of gave me the idea to come up with this video. His name is Lincoln Harrison and he's well known for his vibrant star trail photography techniques. He's really mastered this type of photography and I remember when I started doing star trails, my results were not this colorful. So I'm going to explain the different settings you could use for your star trails if you want more or less color. Let's get started with the basic understanding of what you'll need for star trail photography. First, a camera with the ability to be put in manual mode so you could adjust the shutter, ISO, aperture, and focus. Next, you'll need a solid tripod and you might want to weigh it down with sandbags or something else since you'll be shooting for several hours to achieve the star trail effect. Adding weight will help reduce shakiness if it's windy out. The last thing I recommend is an intervalometer, which will help you take long, consecutive exposures. Some of my cameras, like my Nikon D800, already have a built-in intervalometer. So before you go out and buy one, just check your DSLR's capabilities, which may save you some money. Now star trails are created due to the rotation of the earth and when it comes to composition, many photographers in the northern hemisphere like to include Polaris, aka the North Star in their photo. By including the North Star, it helps show the exaggeration of star movement as larger rings are formed the further away they get from the celestial pole. The same circular effect would happen in the southern hemisphere as well. If you'd like to include the North Star in your photo, it's good to bring a compass along so that way you know which way is north. Then you can use this helpful trick. Find the Big Dipper, which tends to be brighter than the Little Dipper. Then use the outermost stars that make up the bowl of the Big Dipper. These two stars will make an imaginary line that points towards the North Star. This is a great method when you're in remote areas and your phone can't help you locate it. Now you don't need to aim your camera towards celestial poles to create interesting star trail photos. I created star trails like this image, which was facing east when the Milky Way was rising. I did a time lapse of the Milky Way rising, then I stacked all those images to create a star trail photo. I took it a step further by overlaying a single Milky Way photo on top of the star trail photo to create what you see here. So with some of this basic knowledge out of the way, let's talk about how to create colorful star trails like Lincoln Harrison. I'm going to use two photos for an example. Both of them were taken with my Nikon DSLR with a 14mm lens and both of them with the same amount of shooting time which was around 3 hours. The main difference was my ISO settings. Starting with the one on the left, I took this photo at Joshua Tree National Park when I was camping there. And many star trail photos tend to look like this one. A lot of white stars and only a little bit of color in, the, like in some of the stars and it's because of my high ISO. The stars were overexposed, causing them to be white. Now, there's nothing wrong with this type of star trail picture. I think it still came out pretty cool, but if you're trying to achieve vibrant, colorful images like Lincoln Harrison's photos, you need to adjust your settings like the next photo I'm going to show you. Now, this star trail photo was taken at a much lower ISO of around 400. Now, when you take these photos, they may look kind of dark and underexposed, but when you zoom in on your stars, you should notice much more color. Here's a single photo from the star trail stack. Look how many colorful stars there are instead of being white. I captured pink, green, blue, yellow, orange, purple, and different shades of these colors by lowering my ISO. So if you want more color in your stars, I recommend you keep your ISO between 400 to 1000. Your shutter speed should be around 25 or 30 seconds, and your aperture should be between f2.8 to f4. This should get you pointed in the right direction. Now this photo was taken in the course of 3 hours, but if you really want to achieve the Lincoln Harrison look, you should shoot for 6 to 10 hours according to him. That's a lot of time and dedication, but that's what separates a good photo from a great photo. If you want to learn more about stacking your images and star stacks, please watch my other tutorial on that. And next week I'm going to make a video to show you how to turn your star trails into a time lapse video. So thanks for watching. I hope you learned something new and please like and subscribe. Bye.